let us tell you about those last two hours oh my days <laughs> hello everyone and welcome back if you're new here we're cheska and ben with our little pup river we're driving our sprinter van sophia east across europe and into turkey join us this week as we head ever deeper into the greek mountains what Aye, aye, aye. What? subscribe and join us for the ride Welcome back to the Zagori Mountains. Before we leave this magical and enchanting corner of Greece, we're going to take ourselves deep into the mountains on the hunt for dragons. So you know how I always say that Ben managed to spot all the wildlife? Last night we had a little bit of a wildlife drama outside the van at half four this morning. River needed to go for a poo at four o'clock in a nice dark place. So we were down here and on the road we heard, I heard some like... There was a load of rustling wasn't there? Loads of rustling and then like, something ran across the road with hooves and everything. And the next thing, what I thought was a fox, ran up the bank with his pointy ears and like his big paws and everything and just stopped like that frozen. The river was a... Growling like mad. It turns out, it wasn't only a bloody lynx. <laughs> While this was happening, I was at the van and all I could hear was loads of rustling going on down here. And I thought it might be like birds or something. Ben was like shining the torch. The next thing I know, he's like, come on River, run! And like, <laughs> absolutely legging it back to the van. He's like, get in, get in. Well, because that... Because it's like, the lynx was running straight for me. The, the lynx was running for me, but I think it wasn't running for me. I think it was running away from something else that was bigger down there because there was definitely like so, hooves. It startled the lynx and the lynx legged it this way and we just happened to be there. River was mid-poo. <laughs> so that got cut short. <laughs> we were up yeah. at half six, basically didn't go back to sleep after that. So we've been up since half four. About to go on a nine hour hike. Let's go. Is that the lynx from last night, babe? <laughs> This okay. ride is spiky. So, a nine hour hike, I hear you say. Why the hell are you doing a nine hour hike? You guys are not the only one who are thinking that. We are heading to the Dragon Lakes. It's meant to be one of the most spectacular hikes to do in the whole of Greece, but it is a pretty much upward slog the entire way. It's like nine hours there and back. A lot of people camp over at the lake, but we're gonna try and do it in a day because we've got all the summer daylight. Yep. <clears throat> so. Stupid leave us. <laughs> They're also called the Dracolimni in Greek. Now, the reason they're called the Dragon Lakes, it, there's two theories. First theory is two enemy dragons who live in these mountains were fighting and their fireballs created these huge like pits in the earth and they filled with water and that's what's made the lakes. The second theory is that it's named after the little amphibious newts which live in the lakes who look like dragons. So I'll let you decide which one you'd rather believe is the reason they're called the Dragon Lakes. We'll see if we can find these little newts as well when we yeah. We're an hour in, aren't we? Yeah, I'm just We're having an hour in. Breakfast. We're two and a half kilometers in, and it's been like that mm. all the way. It is a leg burner, it's a leg killer, but. And it gets worse. Yeah, it gets worse, apparently. Okay. Ready for round two? Another hour? Another hour, then a two minute break? Ten minute break. Five minute break, we'll compromise. You might want to pick River up. There's one behind me. Hey, hey, hey! What? Hey, hey, hey! What? 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 Oh, dog, dog. 
let us tell you about those last two hours. Oh my days. <laughs> we had to climb up this valley and in the middle of this valley was a massive flock of sheep with about three or four sheep dogs. Now the sheep dogs are there to protect the herd from wolves and stuff and we do know they are around. Had River on a really short lead, thought we were avoiding the flock but they obviously caught a scent of river, came bounding over, barking and barking. Growling and... Had to, the tripod is an excellent offensive weapon, by the way. Yeah. And... We had to put river up on there. We, luckily, we were at a sort of like a checkpoint stop bit, which had a table and everything. A little shelter. So we got river check up on... Checkpoint. <laughs> checkpoint. We got river up onto the table and the dogs, I went off and sort of... Scared them off. Shooed them off and everything. Um, and then thankfully there was yeah. a group of six Israeli guys doing this hike and they were kind of spread out a little bit so we just like joined in the middle of their group <clears throat> and I think because there was a bit, few more of us had River in the middle with Ben and I stayed at the back with I the tripod. Carrying, I was hanging her for a bit and walking up vertical carrying <sighs> River. So my hips on fire because of the ascent that we were doing. Thought we'd found somewhere to stop, thought we'd got past the herd. What comes around the corner the dogs again they started like following us i think they caught the scent of river or they could smell the food in our bags basically making amazing time we've done it in three yeah. hours because we've we were running from the dogs chased by sheep dogs the entire time okay, so we've made it to the mountain refuge and finally we've got some downhill to walk into this massive valley and then we've got one final savage push a good kilometer like that apparently not looking forward to, but it's only a kilometre. We can do it. Get to the lakes. Then it's lunchtime. Then it's lunchtime. And then 90% of the way back is downhill. Yeah. And we've got a battle with the dog as well. So we're just tooled up. Are you ready? Ready. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Let's Go. do it. Up there. Come on then. Coming over the hill, flock of bloody cows. A flock of cows? I've never heard of cows. Heard of cows. <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting out of the way of the cows as far as we can, because we've got a river. So we're stuck in a herd of cows, the shepherds are herding them. So I think like a couple have gone off, so they've stopped them to get the others back. But because we're right in the middle of them and there's loads of calves and we've got river, cows and dogs don't mix very well. No. So we're now- And they're very interested in us anyway. Yeah. So we're now perched. Find a Christmas tree. I am protector with the tripod. <laughs> you shall not pass, cows. Right, we just <laughs> circumvented the cows. We've gone like round this steep bit where that guy's coming up now. Oh, we made it. Do you want a celebratory oh, can of coke? coke? Yes, please. I need the sugar. The so last night I made some crepes and filled them with chocolate spread. So we've got some chocolatey pancakes. Ready? Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay, we've got some stats for you. How long do you think we've been on the hike for so far? Is this a question to me? Yeah. It's been 48 years. No, what did she say? 84 oh, years. It's been, oh, the other wrong way around. <laughs> it's been 84 years. How long do you think we've been on the hike for? Four hours. Five hours, ten minutes. <gasps> Have we? Yeah. How far do you think we've come kilometre wise? 15. No, nine kilometres. And we've had an elevation gain of 1500 metres <sighs> in nine kilometres. God, I'm hurting. <laughs> we 
Lady River. So ladylike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hiking through this landscape was equally exhausting, humbling and mind-blowing. We felt so small in the presence of these mighty mountains who seem to quietly stand guard over this valley and have done for millennia. This is where the first sheepdog appeared. <laughs> so I like to think we're coming out of sheepdog territory now. The sheep are up there, they've gone back into their little Huts. Huts or whatever it is. Little farm area that the shepherds have. Oops, <sighs> what an amazing hike. That's brilliant. Best I've ever done in my Thanks life. Well you are a star. <laughs> oh, it just tastes so cold and fresh. We are nearly back to the van, guys. And oh, wow. I am shit. <laughs> Well, Chess says it all. I am shattered. River has crashed out behind the camera. Tops up our water at the spring. Get me in. Get me in. Sweet home. Come on, River. One, two, three. Good morning. How are you feeling today? Today's a struggle. <laughs> Today my knee aches, my hip aches. But apart from that, I'm in good spirits. I'm not yeah. tired, I'm such, I slept so well. Yeah, we just crashed, didn't we, last mm. night? I think I to bed by, what, half nine, ten o'clock? Yeah. I think I, as soon as the light went off, I was gone. And I didn't wake up till about six when River needed to go for a walk. Even River was crashed out. As soon as we got back, at like, what time was it? Five o'clock? Yeah. River. She was asleep all evening until this morning. Yeah. In fact, she got up to have dinner. Uh, about half six, went out for a poo and a wee before bed, and then just literally just crashed. She really enjoyed it yesterday. Yeah. <clears throat> We're all a little bit slow and creaky this morning, but we need to get food, we need to get water. The van has been in shade, complete shade, for the past two days. So, what the battery's down to, like less ba than 50? Batteries are in about 40%. So. so, we need to give them a good charge or at least find some good sun. So, despite the fact that we're feeling slow and creaky, we've got quite a lot to do today. The village we just parked at was called Micro Papigo and there is one road in and out of it and it's about 45 minutes to get in. So the road is very, very windy. It's not too bad. Um, it's just slow, isn't it? It's slow going because there are some hairpin bends on here. Got leftover chocolate crepes for breakfast. They're a little bit stale, but it's still delicious. It's that time of the week again to fill it with water. This time we found a tap at a petrol station, but it's actually like a little spring. Finding water in Greece has actually so far been really easy because there are so many of these just like natural spring points everywhere. I don't know what it's like outside of the mountains. Obviously these springs have been here for centuries for the locals, but yeah, it does make finding water pretty easy, which is nice. Your high hopes, love. So delicate. So we've made it back to our little field. You might recognise this spot from the end of last week's video. It's a nice little camper van area just by the mountains. And because we're not planning on moving at all today, we're going to sit here, chill, get on with some work. But because it is so, so hot today, we are going to get our awning up. So as you know, if you've ever looked into getting awnings for your motorhome or your van or anything, you know, A, they're either really heavy, B, you have to fix them into your van, which we didn't want to do and see, really expensive. We're lucky enough to have partnered up with Moonshade. Now, if you don't know who Moonshade are, they're a US company that provides portable awnings, lightweight portable awnings for motorhomes, for you know, van conversions, for Land Rovers, you name it, and they are fantastic. But this one is portable and it only weighs 3.6 kilos. Really easy to set up, and I'm gonna show you now. Famous last word. Easy every other time we set up. So you've got two 
lightweight poles here, which make the canopy. Canopy, as you can see, is again, lightweight, it's nice and thick, and I believe it's reversible. You've got two options to attach it to your van. First option is these suckers, which you see on sat navs and things that you attach to your windscreen. These are great, but we have two high strength magnets. Now, these are solid. They don't go anywhere. And then, yeah, just whack the magnets onto your van, and it's there. And the, be you know, the best thing is, because it comes with the magnets and it's not fixed onto your van or anything, you can put them onto cars, Land Rovers, anything like that. Do you know what? We've had it and it's been fantastic. It's been perfect for a river to sit underneath. Just gives us that little bit more outdoor space when you're living in such a small van. So we have wanted a moonshade for absolutely ages, so we're so, so happy to be working with them. If you're interested in getting yourself one, they've kindly offered our subscribers a 10% discount code, so I'll pop the link to that in the description down below. Oh, you're tiny. You're tiny. Got a new friend. Ah, oh, those claws are sharp. You're gorgeous, aren't you? She's so cute. She's so she's just purring constantly. What are you doing? Hang on, what are you hiding from me? What are you doing? What are you doing, babe? What have you got? Oh, I know what's happening. To the tuna. I used to have cats, Fizz and Loco, and um. We'd share three tins of tuna, so I'd have a tin of tuna, because I love tuna. And then the Fizz and Loke would have their tin each as well. We'd sit there and just eat our own, our own tuna. But I thought, you know, there's that cat there. He's only like a baby, he's only a kitten. Is it here or is she? Uh, she sorry, she's only a kitten. So I'm gonna go and give her some food, just okay. because I don't know where she's come from. Come on then. Oh, you were hungry, weren't you? What are you going to try? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to antagonise River with at ten thirty? Well, I at saw night? a reel, and somebody is like, "Cuddle your dog's favourite toy, and then see what your dog does." and their dog came and cuddled with them. I don't think River's gonna do that, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Let's see what she does. Oh, they're just lying down in the center. Cute little center. <laughs> I'm trying to cuddle Santa. I'm trying to cuddle <laughs> Something tells me River doesn't want you cuddling her Santa. I can't believe she didn't come and cuddle with me. <laughs> Just took it from me. We are going to be leaving here today and we've got one more day in the mountains before we leave and move on because there is a lot of grease to see and we have stuck around this area for quite a while now. I mean, it is probably one of the most beautiful places we've ever been to and you can get to absolutely spectacular places relatively easily so couldn't recommend putting this place on your list enough. We ended our stay in the mountains by exploring one of the most beautiful Zagori villages, Papingo. Accessed by a single road that twists and turns at the mountainside, the village is built completely of slate and is surrounded by the most incredible landscape, towering mountains and thick, dense forest. So when you think of a typical Greek village, you normally think of like the big white houses with the blue roofs and stuff like Santorini style. All of these villages in the Zagori mountains are made from slate, everything from the walls to the roof and even all the floors and the lanes here, cobbled together from slate. Our hips and legs are literally twinging because that, right up in that little dip there. Just here. Is where we walked to. That is where the refuge is. You might be able to not, mm. might make it out. It's just, just on there. the top. Just on the top. That's the refuge we got to. And had to go down and up. Yeah, I'm 
never had a chamomile latte before. Oh babe, look behind. I just can't, this village, it just, it is painfully photogenic, this village. It's beautiful. And that's it babe, our mountain tour is coming to an end. I know, Jot. I didn't know what to expect when we were coming to Greece and the mountains, because I only know about the beaches and things. And I've been absolutely blown away. It's been a fantastic couple of weeks up here. We could stay longer, but we've got so much other stuff to see over the next six weeks, so. Yeah. I just want to say what an amazing job Ben has done driving a beast of a van down all of these mountain roads. The road to Papago in particular is insane. It is just like a ribbon like this, literally going down the mountainside. It's not too scary, but when you see it from a distance, it is, you can just see it like cut into the, into the rock with these massive hairpin bends. And obviously we're quite a big fan. I think you've done an amazing job. Well, thank you, you very driving. So we've officially made it out of the mountains. We're actually in the foothills of the mountains now. I was really, really, really sad to go. There is so much more to see and do there, but we just do not have the time. But I guess it's good because it gives us a reason to come back. We picked up a few bits from Papago before we left, including had some of this fur honey, which is made from beehives in that village, which is really cool. Got some sour cherry liqueur. Got myself a nice new pair of earrings. And we've got some postcards. Now this is what the lake is supposed to look like when we're there. Or if you go there kind of like out of the summer when there's still snow there, it looks really, really beautiful. Just some more scenes of the mountains there and it's a bit cooler. But got these to send to our patrons, got some little trinkets, and now we're off to explore some more of Greece. But for now, we're gonna get comfy, get some dinner on. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow our adventures through Greece as we make our way to Turkey. And we shall catch you guys next week. Do you wanna say bye? Bye guys! Say bye, River. Bye. Oof. So while this was happening, I was at the van, still outside. Wait, I want to sit down with you, but please stop farting. Okay. No, I'm waiting until this smells gone. Smells gone. Hey. She's touching me.